Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm Jerry and today I have some maple to mill up. But before we do, I got a few things I want to talk about. Um, one, a couple of you have asked me about our gypsy moths and they're over for the year. If you look behind me, you can see our leaves returned. They've came back about two weeks ago. We got our leaves. They started coming back in. So it's starting to look like summer finally around here and we are now at the end of July. I think it's the 26th of July today. Uh, it's Monday, so if you're seeing this video, it'll probably come out next Tuesday, um, a week from tomorrow. But anyhow, the gypsy moths are gone. The moths are done as well, and I'm not seeing a lot of eggs, so that's a good thing. So, But our leaves are back, and I'll give you a quick tour of the leaves. We don't have a lot of trees around this part of our... I mean, we have a lot, but it's not a forest right through here. But as you can see... Our leaves are all back. Before we get started milling that maple over there that I need to get going for a customer, I noticed uh, my belt, I've, I had an hour meter on this, but it failed. Uh, it's, it wasn't a meter from Frontier. It, I, it was an aftermarket Chinese meter and it ended up failing. Um, I'm guessing I got a couple hundred hours on this mill now for, I use it often. Um, I've not changed the belt yet, the drive belt. The idler belt looks pretty well. There's no wear on that yet. But the drive belt I noticed, and I don't know if you can see it. It's got a pretty good gouge. I don't know what caused it. I noticed a few weeks ago it had a little nick right there. So I'm going to change that before we get started. Like many of you, I'm sure, I didn't read the directions how to change it in the book. So I'm going to take the uh, blade off and I have this high power tube B84, uh, 84 inch. And I believe this is the correct belt. I got this. I don't know where I got this, but I bought this shortly after I got the mill, knowing someday I'd have to do this. So let's get this band off and see what it takes to get this belt changed. Oh. <clears throat> I do have the tension removed, so it should just slide right off. I haven't used the mill since last Friday, which was three days ago. don't know without looking at the direction so I'm going to just try to roll it off the pulley and that came off real easy I didn't want this to break obviously I didn't want it to slide off pop off and have the saw blade pop off and hit inside here and cause some damage so Let's see if it's the same. It looks the same. Boy, I got I got everything I could out of that belt. There was nothing left of it. So let's see if it goes on as easy. I'm thinking it's just going to roll right on. Hmm. That's a pretty loose belt. We have these, the slotted plate, so I'm hoping I have enough adjustment 
and this plate to take that out. I'll be right back with a, I believe it's a 15 millimeter socket. I don't know if I'm gonna get enough adjustment. This might not be the right belt. Let's tighten that up there. Not sure how much adjustment it needs, but I think that's pretty good. This belt must have been a little big. I wouldn't have had enough adjustments in that screw, so I did turn it on that plate. And I think I got it. I'll give it a little bit more. Then we'll turn it on, see how it goes. Oop, I need to loosen that jam nut. Everybody has an adjustable wrench. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to leave that right there. Tighten that jam nut. give these 14s a little snug make sure they're not going to loosen up on me <sighs> so there you go guys that's what it takes to change the belt before i sign off i'll let you see it run make sure it's running all right blades tracking and uh then we'll sign off for the day I'm not familiar with other mills. Uh, this is the only mill I've ever run. But this OS27, these blades are real easy to change. snug with that new belt on there it's thicker than the old belt so I have to loosen it up a little bit more there we go it's on 
So if you're new to the OS27, you're trying to get the gullet, which is the very bottom of the tooth, the round part, flush with the front of the wheel when it's and if when you have it there you have proper tracking so let's see how this is starting to track we'll start tightening it up two We're about a quarter mile from the railroad, so you can hear it crossing down there. These are the gullets I was referring to, the bottom here, and they look and appear to be tracking very well on the idler pulley, as well as the drive pulley. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna live with that. What happens and this is from experience. If you don't have your gullet or your teeth set the right spot out, if they move back a little bit, they will tear up your belt. Uh, the teeth will rub on it, the edge of the tooth, as it goes through, it will rub on the belt and it'll start tearing up your belt. And I think that's probably what happened to my last belt. But it appears I do have it tracking well. We're gonna try it. Let's fire it up and see see if it runs good. Now that I've tensioned everything up, I noticed the belt's a little bit looser. So I am gonna put a little more tension on that pulley. We're just gonna snug it up just a little bit more. I like that. Well, we'll find out if the belt does slip in the board right away. These guys, these are limit switches, little safety switches. So in this door, if you open this door while it's running, it will shut the motor off. I thought I videotaped it, but maybe I didn't. In case I didn't, I'm gonna tell you what I just did. The emergency stop button, the e-stop, works on a ground. <clears throat> and I accidentally must have snagged something and pulled this wire and it yanked it out right there. Um, I don't have some small eyes to replace it, so I just looped it over. What I was doing is I'd shut the e-stop off and take the wire and touch that screw just to kill the motor when I was done. But Finally, I got that fixed back up. So now I'm gonna fire this up, make sure the, the saw blade's tracking well and everything's moving and we'll get a log on it. So this is gonna be a cold start. Hasn't been started since the weekend. Let's see how many pulls it takes.
Okay, it rode well. Let's see what it looks like inside here. We should double check everything before we get milling. All right. So guys, if you have a, a sawmill, a manual sawmill, or any even a hydraulic sawmill, um, there is going to be maintenance to do. Whether it's the routine maintenance of keeping everything oiled up, changing your blades, changing your belts, occasionally uh, fixing or repairing an item. I've not had to do any welding yet on this machine. It's been solid for me i've i've heard of other people having some crack welds here and there but i've not had anything and i think i will have several hundred hours on this this machine now i've been using it really consistently several hours several hours a week so everything went back together we got it started up the ba the blade seems to be tracking well the uh, kill switch works the e emergency stop so i think we're good to go um one last thing Somebody asked me about those robins that were living in my farm all lem. We had that nest. You saw that nest that was living there. And I failed. I forgot to tell you guys about that. Um, I kept an eye on those robins every single day uh, because I wasn't going to start my tractor up until they flew off. So she's uh, moved her nest in there. She just flew back over. But uh, once I saw that nest was empty, I did remove the nest. And now she's nesting up in a pine tree right next to me here. She's Maybe I won that battle this year, but uh, they flew off and I think they all made it. So that was a good thing. So guys, if you that's going to do it for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment. I'll answer most of the comments. Uh, subscribe, share it with your friends and have a great day.